Welcome to the Cedar Creek Bible in a Year podcast. Whether you are listening on your own, with a friend, or a group of friends, we hope this podcast helps you connect with Scripture and also enriches your relationship with God. Here are your hosts, Luke Shortridge and Andy Rectumwald. Hello, everyone. Cedar Creek Radio is on the air. Luke Shortridge hanging out with Andy Rectumwald. Oh, Andy, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing awesome. So we are finishing up Revelation today. Yeah. This is our fourth kind of deeper look at Revelation. And uh, we're going to be looking at chapters 20, 21, and 22. And we're going to be talking about heaven today, which is a very uplifting, awesome topic. Yeah. So, Andy, my thought here was uh, we're going to do a little trivia, and I'm going to see how well you know your afterlifes. My afterlifes? Well, at least classically, yeah, yeah. Uh, people's thoughts and beliefs on heaven. So I'm going to describe an afterlife to you. Okay. Uh, these are found in world religions kind of all over the globe. And I want you to tell me the group of people or the religion that holds to this afterlife kind of view and theory. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I think you're going to do quite well on this. We'll, we'll see what happens okay. here. So first up, uh, this group of people believe that nearly all mortals went to a place called Mixtlin after they died, regardless of how they lived. But if special conditions were met, the soul could be granted access to other afterlives. One such place was known as Telkalon, and it was home to the rain god Talak. And it was exclusively for those who died because of rain, lightning, or various skin diseases, or they were sacrificed to that deity. It was said to be a peaceful land full of flowers and dancing. My goodness. I know. Tell Is me about it. some sort of pagan religion? Um, what's your definition of pagan? Um, Non-monotheistic oh, religion. Then, yes. Okay. I will say that. Yeah, they had many deities. Um... What was the 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 plate the first place they go that everybody goes? What's it called? Mictlan, M I C T L A N. And the second place? Second place is Telkalon. Gosh, I don't know. Uh, I'll give you a hint. Yeah. South America. Yeah, I still don't know. This is the Aztec mythology. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Very interesting. You learn something new every day, huh? Well, you're 0 for 1. We're yeah. going to just keep barreling on here. Here we Touché. go. All right. This religion's afterlife is a place where souls of the righteous go to spend eternity with God. It is described as 60 times better than what we have experienced on earth. Islam? Good Very guess. Wild guess. Nope. It is Judaism. Ah, and okay. the place is Gan Eden, otherwise known as the Garden of Eden. Hmm. Very interesting. All right, Valhalla is a majestic, enormous hall located in Asgard, ruled over by the god Odin. Chosen by Odin, half of those who die in combat travel to Valhalla upon death, led by the Valkyries, while the other half go to the goddess Freya's field, Folkvanger. It's like the religion of the Vikings. Like a, Yes, yeah. good job. Yeah, North Miss North. I think, I think it's Odin. Odin, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Here, so I was thinking about why I'm so bad at pronunciations. Yeah. <laughs> it's because 95% of the learning I've done has been reading books, and I and have, you have no idea how to pronounce stuff. <laughs> I'm just, whatever comes in my head is what yep. I think it is. <laughs> All right, here we go. I'll take it. The Fields of Aru, sometimes known as the Fields of Offerings, is a place that righteous souls arrived at after death. They would find an eternal peace, magnificent crops, and bread and beer of eternity, which would never go stale. Men could also have a number of wives and concubines. No word on what the women get, but basically it's like the physical world, but better. The Fields of Aru. Fields of Aru. Who were the people that created this? Gosh, that's a guy. Um, fields of Aru, limitless beer. That never goes bad. <laughs> never goes stale or weed. Um, gosh, I don't know. That's a good one. Should I give you a continent again? Yeah. Africa. I still don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it is Egyptian mythology. Oh, okay. Yeah. There you this go. This is tough, but Bakun I'm learning a lot. Okay, here we go. Vakuntha is the ultimate destination for souls that have achieved salvation. It's the highest heaven in this religion and said to be a place where the supreme God resides. Souls are greeted with love and fellowship from this God, which lasts for eternity. Vakuntha. How do you spell that? That's the place. V A I K U N T H A. Gosh, um, I don't know. I have no idea. 
Do you want me to give you a continent? Yeah, give me a continent. All right. Or a country, whatever. Uh, that's going to be too simple. I will say Asia. Is it? It's not Hinduism. Yes, it is. Ah, nice woo-hoo. job. Yep. Good work. Do yeah. you know who the supreme god is? Vishnu? Yes. Yeah. Well done, sir. Yeah, I figured yeah. if I gave you that, you'd be I would over, definitely so. get that, but I, yeah, that was... Uh, Turnanag, known as the Lord, the land of the young, said to be far out in the Atlantic Ocean, was a place of eternal happiness and youth. Mortals were usually banned, but they could reach it if the yonder went an extreme trial and were invited by fairies that lived there. Is this like something to do with Atlantis? Nope. Hmm. That was a good guess, though, right? Turn on Nog. I don't know. <laughs> Land of the Young. I have no idea. This is Irish mythology. Oh. Okay. 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 All right. Next up. Otherworld, also said to be located far out into the Atlantic Ocean, sometimes described as a chain of islands, and sometimes described as being located beneath the ocean. It is an idealized mirror image of the Earth where sickness, old age, famine, war, and other kinds of evils are banished. Does this have to do with Atlantis? No. Dang. <laughs> it's tough. It is um, closely related to Irish mythology. That's the last thing I will give you. Scottish mythology. I think I will accept that. Celtic mythology. Okay. Nice job, sir. Okay. Well done. Okay. All right. Next. The Elysian fields or Elysian plains, over time, the meaning of these fields have changed. At first, only mortals with special favor by the gods were allowed to enter, but eventually all mortals who were considered good were allowed to enter. Described as a place of perfection where honey sweet fruit grows three times a year. This is crazy, man. I have no idea. Elysian fields or the Elysian plains. Should I give you a continent again? No, it's not gonna help. <laughs> Obviously, my brain just doesn't wanna 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 work with this one. What's the what's the I'll I'm gonna give you a continent. Okay. I think you're gonna get this one. Europe. So it's the Elysian fields? Mm-hmm. Europe? Mm-hmm. That's the continent where this originated from. I still don't know. Greek mythology. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, wow. All right, next. <laughs> <laughs> this might be my favorite. The land of the Cockney is a place where everyone got whatever they wanted. Seen as an alternative to the boring heaven of Christianity, lewd, hacks were, lewd acts were extremely pronounced. No one needed to work. Abundance of drink. Roast geese would wander around, and cooked pigs and fish would jump into your mouth, begging to be eaten. What in the world? <laughs> where do you find this? The internet. That's where you find it. It was the internet, yes. I have no idea. Is this like, I don't know. Have you ever heard of this? No. I've never heard of this before. Okay, apparently, this is from medieval European mythology, and it is a secular view of what heaven could be. Oh. Yeah. So Very this was originated in Europe. When you said the boring heaven, I was going to say it must be some sort of like, it seemed to me like a sarcastic interpret, you know, like a, it right. was almost like it. Yeah. But, okay. Okay. All right. Here's your last one. Okay. And this is a video slash sound because we're an audio podcast clue. Here we go. One evening as the sun went down and the jungle fire was burning, down the track came a hobo hiking, and he said, boys, I'm not turning. I'm headed for a land that's far away, besides the crystal... Looking for the group of people that this originated with. We'll go and see the big rock candy mountains, in the big rock candy mountains. This is some sort of cult? There's a land that's fair and bright, No, they're awesome. Where the handouts grow on bushes, and you sleep out every night, where the boxcars all are... I, I don't know. No clue. No clue. Hobos. Hobos invented this religion. I don't, Big Rock Candy Mountain. Come on. How would I know this? <laughs> what Because <laughs> hobos are awesome. You were in Yeah, well. Yeah. They don't teach us about hobos there. <laughs> the song originated in the 1910s and 20s by hobos who were traveling the land in boxcars. Oh Big Rock goodness. Candy Mountain. Big Rock Candy Mountain. Okay. Yeah. Now that was you know. fun. My uh, my wife's grandfather, who's since passed away, uh, told me a joke once. He said, you know, he said, last week I was down at the train station, and I met a tramp, and he said, can I have a bite? So I bit him! <laughs> <laughs> that was the joke. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, oh man. All right, Andy, you did terrible. Yeah, I know. Great job. <laughs> that was so bad. Well done, sir. Yeah, thank you. No problem. Well, I, you know, I had to go after some of the eclectic lesser yeah, well, known I ones. See, when you first start, you know, I if we I start describing Nirvana or something that everybody knows, it's not going to work well Good for point. Me. Good point. Nirvana is awesome. So the band, not really. Uh, we are finishing up Revelation. Uh, chapters 20, 21, and 22. If you missed our previous episodes where we have kind of done a deeper look into Revelation, we encourage you to go back and yep. check it out. Uh, but we are going to go ahead and get into the scriptures here. We're in the New Living Translation. If you want to follow along with us, you can pull out a Bible now. We're also going to ask some questions as we go along. Feel free to stop the podcast and answer them. If you're by yourself, you can journal. If you're with a group of friends, you can talk about it, and we'll do our best to answer as well. So we're going to look at Revelation 20, 7 through 15. Andy, you got it for us? Yep. It says, When the thousand years come to an end, Satan will be left out of his prison. He let out of his prison. He will go out to deceive the nations called Gog and Magog in every corner of the earth. He will gather them together for battle, a mighty army as numberless as sand along the seashore. As I saw them, and I saw them as they went up in the broad plain of the earth and surrounded God's people in the beloved city. But fire from heaven came down on the attacking armies and consumed them. Then the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the fiery lake of burning sulfur, joining the beast and the false prophet. There they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne and the one sitting on it. The earth and sky fled from his presence, but they found no place to hide. I saw the dead, both great and small, standing before God's throne. And the books were opened, including the book of life. And the dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. The sea gave up its dead, and death and the grave gave up their dead. And all were judged according to their deeds. Then death and the grave were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. And anyone whose name was not found recorded in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. All right, great job, Andy. So we're seeing kind of this final uh, chapter here where Satan is once and for all defeated. He's thrown into this lake of burning fire. And we also see this great white throne, which is this place of judgment. Um, There's all sorts of discussion and uh, controversy about the great white throne. You know, when does this happen? How does it happen? Who does it involve? Who does it involve? Right. So I'd say let's stay in the known here. The known is that all of us are going to face judgment after Mm -hmm. we die. You know, there's some arguing about is that immediate? Is that someday? Um, so my question here, Andy, is how does it make you know to feel that you are going to face God in judgment someday, and how does that change your day-to-day life? Um, I, I think knowing that God knows what I'm doing and I'm going to face judgment someday, there's there's two parts of it. First, it should impact the way that you live now because um, it should give you integrity or should cause you yeah. to live with, an, live with integrity because it's not that people are going to find out even though they could sure. here, there's no risk involved with God because he already knows. Yep. So there's no gamble. There's no, I could do it. I could get away with it. If I do a B and C, he already yep. knows. So there's no, no gamble there. The other part is that knowing that God's going to judge us, you have to know through the, the lens through which God's going to judge. And that for us as believers is the blood of Jesus. And so um, it gives you a confidence knowing that you're judged. You're going to be judged, not based on your works, but on his, and um, and it, it does mean though that you should live rightly now because you want to please God. Yeah, I agree. I I would say you know it's important to remember here that this is not necessarily about salvation, right? Uh, because if you accept Christ, you you are going to be judged, and your name will be written in the book of life or not. Right. But I do think your deeds, and there's some speculation about the books that are presented here. Uh, perhaps it's the book of life. Perhaps it's the book of the law. Perhaps it's also the book of deeds that you have done. You know, the the book that you are writing as you live your life. Right. Um, that you are going to give an account, and if you've accepted Christ in your life, you will be in heaven with God forever. I don't think there's a bad place in heaven. I don't no. think that you can, like, get stuck to the noisy ice machine and heaven is miserable. Like, heaven is going to be great no matter what. Um, but I do think that our life matters, and I do think that we're going to have to give an account to God for how we spend our time. Sure. Um, for me, though, I guess it really does give me a confidence, and it also gives me purpose. Um, knowing that how yeah. I spend my time, ty- my time matters, and we kind of fool ourselves into thinking that we all have unlimited time, we're going to live forever. Yeah, that's certainly not the case. I mean, once you die, your eternity is sealed. Right. So we have a finite, limited amount of time to spend while we are here on this earth, and I think God does expect us to use the gifts that He has given us and use them well. I agree. And it gives purpose to me day to day to know that someday I am going to face God, and I'm going to have to give an account for what I have done. And 
Um, you know, there, there's certainly times where I've blown opportunities and I haven't been the person that he has called me to be, yeah. but God is full of grace and mercy and love. And, uh, I guess it's time to pick yourself up when that happens and reorient yourself to him and his will for your life. Yeah, definitely. I agree. All right. Well, let's move to revelation 21, one through seven. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared and the sea was also gone. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, Look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes and there'll be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All of these things are gone forever. And the one sitting on the throne said, Look, I am making everything new. And then he said to me, Write this down for what I tell you is trustworthy and true. And he also said, It is finished. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To all who are thirsty, I will give freely from the springs of the water of life. All who are victorious will inherit all of these blessings, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. Hmm. Pretty cool. So yeah, we, we get definitely. a picture of uh, New Jerusalem, this new heaven, and uh, we, we really see that God is at the center of it. And um, Andy, what this is my official question, but you know, what kind of stands out to you when you when you hear this or read this? Um, I, I think it's for most people, I might be involved with the most people category here, but when he says he will wipe away, he will have every tear from their eyes and there'll be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. It's, it's, um, I don't know how to believe that. You know, how do you, how do you, how would you live in a world where there's going to be no more death? Because death is, death is the guaranteed thing of life here. You know, um, no more sorrow. No more crying and no more pain, too. I mean, we feel pain. Humans feel yep. pain on a regular basis because it's a good thing sometimes. Yeah, and I, I've heard people ask, like, okay, if let, let's say you have family members that are not in heaven with you. How could you not feel sorrow right. or pain? And my answer is, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how that works. Yeah, we can't imagine. We, I, I can't. And that's why I feel like it's just unbelievable, and that's what makes heaven so exciting is, is it's so – to read this, you just go, that just seems impossible. Right. But, God's promised yeah, it to it's us. so far out of the context of what we live yep. and how we operate today. I, I heard once that heaven would be like trying to describe to an unborn baby the thrill of riding a roller coaster. Yeah. Or like going on a first date. Like it's so far out of the experience of what that unborn baby has had that they can't even imagine. I mean, it's right. so far out of the possibilities. Yep. That's what heaven will be like for yep. us. I agree. Um, so uh, I guess then uh, my question, Andy, if you could pick what heaven would be like you get your choice huh. Andy says god what what heaven should i create what would you choose what would you pick well just my first response would be obviously i just want to meet i want to meet god so there's that there's that answer but if we're getting into the fun you know crazy stuff <laughs> i want i want to hang out with friends and 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 have good discussion and no and obviously there's no there's no sin involved there's no judgment it's just all that's crazy sit around and talk sit around and talk come on and, andy i don't know that's what i love to set do set your heights higher that's what i love to do sit around and talk and um i don't know i just feel like that that to me and have a feast and oh. good drinks oh with no drunkenness I like you it. know and I, I i don't know and and get to meet all the people that i've heard about in history like sit around with C.S. Lewis and ask him questions and that kind of smoke stuff. Smoke a pipe. Yeah, smoke a pipe. Yeah, they're probably ob- obligatory. Oh, yeah, if you're with C.S. Lewis. Yeah. What about you? Uh, I, uh, I actually got to speak on this passage a couple weeks ago, and uh, I think for me it would be a place where uh, all the markers are washable and the paint never comes off the walls. Uh, I told the story. My uh, sons have been really into the Pokemon card game, and they wanted me to teach them how to play it the right way. So this uh, one particular night, my wife had music practice, or she wasn't home, so it's just me and the kids. I have a eight-year-old, six-year-old son, and then a three and a half-year-old daughter. So we're playing, and I'm trying to figure it out. Like I went on the internet, and we're just engrossed in this card game. And uh, we're upstairs, and after a while, it just was a little too quiet. And I'm like, boys, can you go check on your sister? I'm, I'm not sure, you know, where she is. So Jackson goes downstairs, and I hear him shout for me. So I come down. The amount of damage my daughter had done in 30 <laughs> minutes was staggering. She got all of a purple marker yep. and went to town. I mean, every wall in the house was covered. She wrote on toys. She wrote on the TV. She wrote on furniture. She wrote on her brother's homework he had to turn in the next oh day. I mean, gosh. she went 
crazy. That's nuts. So then I, I spent the next hour yep. with magic erasers scrubbing the walls, and you can see where I had to scrub because some of the paint has come off. Gosh. So now I have to paint the whole house. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, heaven is a place where all the markers have permanent <laughs> caps on them. They never come off. <laughs> Touche. Touche. Ah, oh, good stuff. Yeah, I, you know, it, it's fun to think and dream, but I, I think what I take away here is that God is there in heaven, and it's going to be more amazing than we can even imagine and understand. Yep. And I, I, I love, too, thinking that it's eternal. You know, where Jesus says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, just as God has no beginning or no end, heaven will be a place with no end. And the idea of eternity, I think, can be a little scary to some, but um, it's going to be amazing, and it's going to be forever. Yep. So it gives us great confidence. Uh, all right, let's check out Revelation 22, 1 through 7, and then we'll jump to 17 through 21. Andy, you got this for us? Yep. Then the angel showed me a river with the water of life, clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. It flowed down the center of the main street. On each side of the river grew a tree of life, bearing 12 crops of fruit with a fresh crop each month. The leaves were used for medicine to heal the nations. No longer will there be a curse upon anything, for the throne of God and of the Lamb will be there, and his servants will worship him, and they will see his face, and his name will be written on their foreheads. And there will be no night there, no need for lamps or sun, for the Lord God will shine on them, and they will reign forever and ever. Then the angel said to me, Everything you have heard and seen is trustworthy and true. The Lord God who inspires his prophets has sent his angel to tell his servants what will happen soon. Look, I am coming soon. Blessed are those who obey the words of prophecy written in this book. And we're going to jump to verse 17. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come. Let anyone who hears this say, Come. Let anyone who is thirsty come. Let anyone who desires who desires drink freely from the water of life. And I solemnly declare to everyone who hears the words of prophecy written in this book, If anyone adds anything to what is written here, God will add to that person the plagues described in this book. And if anyone removes any of the words from this book of prophecy, God will remove that person's share in the tree of life and in the holy city that are described in this book. He who is faithful, he who, he who is the faithful witness to all these things says, yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. May the grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's holy people. Awesome. So Revelation ends with this promise that Jesus says, I am coming soon. You know, be, be ready, be prepared. And it kind of gives us again this picture of God and his people living in harmony, that just like way back in Genesis where Adam and God lived in this blessed state, in the Garden of Eden, that mankind will once again return, that God and people will live in this blessed state, and it will be for eternity. Mm -hmm. um, it's just so beautiful. I, I just, I love the imagery, you know, drinking freely from the water of life, um, you know, where every, every desire and need God will provide for, and we'll have such close physical proximity to him like we've never experienced before. That should give us hope. I mean, for yeah. all of us here, our our lives are imperfect, they're fragile, we live in a broken world, right. and this was given to us uh, to have hope. And uh, I, I think it's interesting, too, the scriptures say to set your mind on things above. We are commanded to think and dream about heaven. Yeah. And uh, I think this is an important passage to continually go back to, mm -hmm. especially when times are difficult in your life. Yeah, I think that's the motivation of the believer. There's all the good things we do here. Um, are, are sh as the writer of Hebrews would say, are a shadow of the things to come. Yep. So when you think about heaven, obviously they, God could not, or did, chose not to describe in perfect detail exactly what was going to happen because he wants to leave that open to, you know, uh, to dream about maybe whatever, but we know it's going to be perfect. We know that the, yep. it's going to be, um, no matter how you take the book of Revelation, it's going to be perfect. It's going to be exactly what every human being needs and desires, and that's why they, that's why people say, they're going home because that's where everybody's supposed to be. Yeah, and I, I think it's important, too, to say that, uh, you know, we talked about the different theories on Revelation, and what's argued about a lot is the timeline of events. But uh -huh. I, I think we can say here that uh, every theory, no matter what theory you hold to, it still ends with Christ reigning supreme yep. and God's God being with his people forever. And that really should give us confidence. My question, though, Andy, is what do you need to do, if anything, to prepare for the return of Jesus? Um, I, yeah, I think I already kind of touched on this, but you think, and you said it, think about the things of heaven, think yep. about what's to come, think about God, and then try to live, um, try to live rightly, try to live a, a, an upstanding life as a believer in Christ, try to follow the commands of God because he gave them to us for a reason. And so when you're constantly doing the things of God, then your mind is set on the things of God. 
and and I think you're more prepared then for Jesus' return. I remember a quick story here. So back in the day uh, when I was a high schooler, we would go on this trip to Myrtle Beach every year, and uh, part of the organization we were with is they would do beach evangelism. So you would go out and just talk to random people and try to bring up the gospel. And yeah, I never saw a lot of success through it, but I sure learned how to share my faith, which was great. Uh, but I remember one time, um, I didn't speak with him initially, uh, Steve, our leader, did, but there was this kid on the beach who was drunk, and mm. Steve started talking to him, and Steve had kind of come from a party lifestyle, and he's like, man, he's like, I've, I've been where you've been, and it's empty, you know, it just, it doesn't lead anywhere. And as Steve was talking to him, he found out that this guy is a Christian, at least he professed to be, and the kid said, I'm I'm forgiven. I can do whatever I want. You know, I can live my life however I want. Right. Because I'm, I'm forgiven. And Steve's like, buddy, y- your life is leading to destruction. Even though your salvation may be assured, you're, you're not living for God mm-hmm. and you're continually making yourself a slave to sin. I, I don't know if the kid even remember the conversation, but just remember that his attitude of, I can do whatever I want. Right. I have this new freedom in Christ. I can right. sin and sin and sin. And that's addressed in the New Testament. Oh, yeah. Paul says, of course not. You don't live that way. That's right. not, we don't sin so that right. grace can abound. We we continue to live rightly because God calls us exactly. to. Exactly. And he's yep. owed it. But I, I think a lot of us, maybe not us, but I know that there are people who feel like, you know, I don't need to go to church. I don't need to be around Christians. I don't need to go through the motions because God loves me and forgives me so I can do whatever I want. Right. And that's really the opposite mindset of what we're called to have yep. because we know Christ is coming back and we are a witness to him. We are to live our lives where God has complete control. You know, yep. we're, we're living uh, under the spirit, not by the flesh. And uh, I, I would say for me, uh, what do I need to do to prepare for the return of Jesus? Live each day like he's coming back today. You know, I, who knows? He may come back today. <laughs> you know, as you're listening to this, he may come back today. What, what would you say if Jesus came back? And he said, what have you done with the time that yep. I've given you? Um, we need to be ready to give an account each and every day because we don't know. We don't know uh, when these these uh, events will be set in right. motion. Definitely. Good stuff. Andy, any any thoughts on Revelation as we kind of wrap up here? Any concluding I mean, I've kind of said it. I've kind of said it each time we conclude, but basically don't be a, don't be afraid of reading the book, but, um, I think it helps to understand the different viewpoints before you go into it, because otherwise you're just, you're diving into something way, you know, way too, way yep, too deep, complex. So. Yeah, I, I agree. I'd say, and study revelation. If you haven't before, uh, pick up a great study Bible. Um, I really like the new living application Bible, new mm-hmm. life application Bible. Um, there is also a great resource. It's uh, Rose Publishing puts out a pamphlet mm-hmm. that has the four theories, and it goes chapter by chapter. And uh, maybe we can... Is there a place to put a link to that? Do we have that technology here? Can we put a link to something? Maybe uh, when we share okay. it on our Facebook posts. Oh. All right. Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to share the show on my Facebook, and Eric's going to put the link for you guys. There we go. <laughs> oh, perfect. He doesn't have a microphone, so he can't tell me no. <laughs> uh, but my my final wrap-up thought here is that God is in control. Uh, the things that happen uh, will, being, will be directed by him, and that should give us great confidence and great hope and live our lives Love ready it. for Jesus to come back each and every day. So, Andy, how do people get a hold of us? They can find us on Facebook, as we just mentioned. You can follow us on Twitter, Andy Rector. To Walden Luke Shortridge. Um, you can email us with any feedback or questions at podcast at cedarcreek.tv. Also, we'd love it if you would um, subscribe in the iTunes store or um, the, the write Google us a review Play and write us a review. If you like it, if you like it, if you don't, just send us your negative comments in the podcast email. Um, and also, we'd love it if you'd share the link to the podcast for others to uh, check out. Perfect. Thanks for hanging out with us, guys. Yep. We'll see you next time. See ya. Bye. Bye. Bakuntha is the ultimate destination for souls that have achieved salvation. It's the highest heaven in this religion and said to be a place where the supreme god Cessides, I can't be right, <laughs> souls are greeted with love and fellowship from this god which lasts for eternity. And Cessides is S E S I D E S. Is this like, um, can I get a continent, please? It's like my lifeline now. All right, I see what I did here. <laughs> Somehow I transposed an R for an S. So it's supposed to be resides, where the Supreme God resides. <laughs> <laughs> I have mangled this question. Can I, can I do a question do-over? <laughs> Sorry, boys. <laughs>
That's horrible. Sesames. <laughs> I, just, I was trying to like, why is this not capitalized? <laughs> it's because I just screwed the word up. 